So hi everyone. I've been asking everyone to please create some type of tutorial or a commercial or a short lesson on something that you found to be useful. You might not believe me, but there will be other people that will find your ideas useful as well. So Katie McBrien from Quashnet reached out to me and asked if there were ways to hot file inside Google Drive. And I had no idea. So I did what I always do and I Googled it and I found what to what I thought would be a decent article to get her started. And I teased her saying she would have to create a tutorial for me. Well, I would like to say that she is a great sport and not only did she read the article and figure it all out, but she did, she created a tutorial. And I'm gonna share that with you so you can learn too. Here and share and play. Hi guys, it's Katie McBrien from the Quashnet School. I wanted to share something with you that I had uh, presented an inquiry to Susie Brooks and she was able to help me out and now I'm going to try to model what it's like to try to hide a file in a folder in Google Drive. So we will start up in my drive and I want to go to the folder that our team has established called student resources and teaching tools. And this would be a, um, a folder that we will share with our students. You can see we have subfolders that are subject specific. But for this short tutorial, I'm just going to go into the general resources subfolder. This is um, by no means anywhere near completed, but we started throwing a few resources in here that the students can access anytime. Things like question words in their writing, uh, how do you form a particular letter in cursive, reminders to make sure that they're whisper talking and soft buzzing all their writing. Um, things like, you know, in our academic space, let's please remind ourselves to use an academic voice, et cetera, et cetera. And then it seems like I kind of have this random picture in here of colored irises. So that actually, as you can see, is the first part of the cursive alphabet, and I have the second page of it right here. So I'm going to hide this file in plain sight because I might not even want the students to access it yet. Um, there might be something you put in a folder that is part of your curriculum later in the year you want it organized in a particular area, but you don't really want it available to the students yet. So what you do is you right click on the document that you're referring to, and then you click on this part right here that says manage versions. What you'll want to do ahead of time is just have a couple of uh, snips or graphics or pictures or images available and ready and you'll click on this upload new version of that file. And I'm actually going to use the same, um, the same picture in this scenario. So I'll just click on the irises and open it and you'll see that it pops right up at the top here. It'll always be above the original, which says version one. And in this particular case, it says cursive two, meaning the second page of cursive. So this is actually the image that I just attached to it. And when I close it, you'll see that the cursive page is no longer available for viewing. And in fact, when the students open up this um, folder and they're looking at some of their resources that have been made available to them already, if they're wondering, wow, what's that one about the flowers? When they click on it, it's literally just gonna be linked to the picture of the flowers so they can't see anything. When it becomes time for you to reveal um, what it is that you want your students to be accessing, you wanna once again go onto the file, right click it, go into manage versions one more time, and of course you want the original one, which is the cursive version one. So all you do is click on the three dots here and you wanna download it, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to download it, load it so we can view it, but this is a biggie. This particular um, program only keeps the hidden images for 30 days. So if, you're, if you want some things organized in a folder for later, 
in the school year, you really need to click on this right here, which says keep forever, which would mean that I would keep my cursive document maybe until April or May. Um, it's, it's just going to stay there hidden forever. But in this case today, I need to access it. So I'm going to click on download. And I'll go into my downloads. And there it is right there. There they are. I could drag it anytime I want to right into my folder. And then it becomes visible for the students again. In this particular case, it's going to say we already have one that matches that name. So I want to keep it separate because there is no reason for me to keep that document hidden. I want my students to be able to go in and access whatever that tool is. And at this point right now, I could literally just delete. Um, I can remove the hidden one that I did. There we go. So this one still is hidden. It's the first page of the cursive alphabet. There's a second. I could do it with any and all documents. Um, what I want to show you and share with you is my inquiry to Susie just asked if this was possible. She shared this video with me called How to Hide Files Inside Google Drive. And I have found this to be very, um, I have found it to be very helpful from a perspective of just wanting to not have the kids have access to everything right at the beginning and kind of release them and let them out to them when it pertains to our curriculum. And feel free to use it and also feel free to email me if you have any questions. I think that's awesome. So like Katie said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to her. You, if, especially if you have new ideas on how to use that same skill, you might think inside your own head, wow, I could use it for this or for that. So if those ideas come to mind, reach out to her or share it with us or tweet it, do whatever you want, but share those good ideas because you never know what it might spark in somebody else's setting. So thanks again, Katie, and we'll see you on the web.